It's Miss Louise again. Mm -hmm. uh, I got up this morning and thinking, well, tomorrow, Sunday of all days, uh, is Halloween. And um, there's always been kind of a, a confusion in my mind where as a Christian I need to cooperate and celebrate Halloween or, or not and so forth and so on. And I know that some stores have shut down. And... <clears throat> But the, the issue behind Halloween itself is not so much what I want to get into. It's the concept of fear. And, you know, <clears throat> fear, of course, is the is like it's the driving force of Halloween. And um, I don't see as many um, Freddy Krueger and um, Halloween 1, 2, and 3 on TV as we used to just pump it through like it was honey right up all the way up a month before Halloween ever came on. But I do want to talk about the idea of fear. Because, you know, fear is dominating our society today. It's all around us. It's, uh, we're afraid of this, we're afraid of that, we're afraid of getting this, we're afraid of going here, we're afraid for our children, we're afraid, afraid, afraid. So what does the Bible have to say about fear? As Christians, where do we stand on the issue of fear? Um, First, I want you to know that fear is contrary to God. He did not give us a spirit of fear. If you look at 2 Timothy, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. Um. Now I don't want you to switch over and then I'm going to talk to you about a story of mine. Switch over to 1 John uh, chapter 4 verse 18 and it says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment, but he who fears has not been made perfect in love. Oh my goodness, that's a lot to say. And so we're going to look at this just for a second. First off, let me tell you something. Fear is a spirit. Um, <clears throat> there's a, a natural kind of people say, well, I'm afraid, you know, blah, we have a fear comes on me. No, we have a um, reverence for uh, dangerous situations that we can deal with in a calm and cool manner. But the spirit of fear is a whole different ball game. And we can open that door of a spirit of fear even at a very early age. And I'm going to give you a perfect example. When I was a little girl, we lived in a, a small town in Florida called Arcadia. And it was back in the Opie days where you had Mount Pilot. Nobody locked their doors. Everybody had screens on their windows, but nobody closed the windows. Nobody locked the doors. Um, your children ran free until it got dark, and then they came inside. We didn't have cell phones to wonder where everybody was. Um, there was just never a fear promulgating everything around us. But <clears throat> one night, somebody did come into our house. Had seen my mother, we figure, at the grocery store with uh, money that she had paid her bill with. And they came into our house and they went through the drawers and they found her pocketbook and they stole the money. And my father woke up, chased the person out of the house, and scared fear the daylights out of me as a little girl. From that moment on, I had opened that door of a spirit of fear that dominated my life like nothing you can imagine. I never wanted to sleep alone. I was terrified of sleeping in the dark. I was scared of being left alone, of windows being opened, everything. It was terrifying. I didn't want to go to sleepovers to friends' houses because... I was scared that I'd have to sleep by myself. I My mother sent me to camp, and I can remember one of the camps that she, that I went to. The, the bathrooms were not in the cabin. 
So if you had to get up during the night to go to the bathroom, you had to walk all the way down this lane and then go to the bathroom. I was so afraid. I was so fearful of going out in the dark that I would not get up and go to the bathroom and I got a kidney infection, a bladder infection, basically, a bladder infection because of it. And my mother had to come get me and I had to go home. Um, as growing up, it always haunted me. And as I became an adult, I remember my mother put a burglar alarm system on our house. And even with a burglar alarm system on our house, I was still always on edge that somebody would break in. And we had burglar bars on the windows. And you know, honestly, we should have been more afraid of all the protections that we had on because if the house caught on fire, we couldn't have gotten out. Uh, but we were very secure in that house. And um, when I went to Rhema, uh I was sitting up one night and had just flicked through and saw the movie Halloween. And I thought, as a child growing up, we saw all kind of freaky movies, you know, the monster from the Black Lagoon, and you name it. And... Um, and so I thought, well, I'm going to watch this, just for the heck of it. And I watched that, and I want to tell you something. A tormenting spirit of fear came upon me like nothing I could ever imagine with just that movie. I was just horrified. And I learned later on in school about that fear was a spirit. And that I had authority over that spirit in the name of Jesus. But I was the one that was going to have to deal with it. And I remember sitting up in my bed, and this is the truth, half the night confessing God's word that I did not have a spirit of fear and that Satan had to go in Jesus' name. And I was not going to be tormented by a spirit of fear anymore. And I confessed it, and I read it, and I stood on it. And do you know I got set free from that spirit? And I have never had a spirit of fear on me since. Never. And, you know, I can watch Halloween now and laugh about it. But there was one time I was that I was terrified. And see, what we don't understand is that, first off, it is a spirit. And if you open that door without realizing what you're doing, you have opened a spirit to come into your life, to control your life. And that's not what God wants us to be. And when you go around confessing, I'm afraid I'm going to get the coronavirus. There are people that will not leave their houses. They will not go shopping. They have been frozen in place from fear. Fear has been put out on this country, spoken over the people. It is a controlling power. And it can control your life to the point that you are totally frozen. And you need to break that power. You need to break that power in the name of Jesus. You need to say, no, I refuse. God is love. And where there's God's love, there is no fear. Because God will not allow anything to happen to me. Because I am his child. And see, this is where we have to come to. We have to realize that there is no fear in love because God is love. And God's love casts out all fear. If you know God loves you, walk on. Do not be bound by Satan. You know, Halloween... Do you know why the main theme for Halloween, which is Satan's high holiday, is fear? Think about that. 
Our high holiday is that Jesus Christ is rose from the dead. Hallelujah. There is salvation and life eternal. So you see, the two don't even go together at all. And so we have to come to that point when we keep hearing over and over these words of fear and dread. We need to tune it out, baby. We need to replace that with, Hello, I am God's child. I walk in sanctification, holiness, perfection, and the love of God. And no weapon, weapon that Satan can try to form against me shall prosper. No plague can come nigh my dwelling. Hallelujah. But we do this because we have stood on God's word. It doesn't happen overnight. You may have to stay up all night in your bed confessing the word like I did. But whatever you do, people, do not let your family, your life, your peace, and your country be taken over by those who do nothing but dominate us with fear. And that's my last word to you today. So I want to tell you, God is for you. And if God is for you, who could be against you? You have the power of the Almighty God to walk and protect you. He's put angels around you to guard you. And so I want you to take a hold of this. And I want us as a Christian people to begin to walk in the fullness of all that God has for us. And it's not a spirit of fear. And I love every one of you. And I pray that you be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.